The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Just desserts, it's not just the word. Some of y'all heads up in the cloud. I'ma bring y'all back to earth. It's black back to burn. Y'all talking about out your mouth. I'm not concerned. Cause y'all got the nerve. It's y'all turn like Detroit red. When his head had an ultra perk. The long walk I burn your bare heels, so the on your boots. The game camouflage like all Talking suits, Heads with Naughty is sponsored by the Bahamas Out Island Promotion Board, BTC, Burger King, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, the Cleveland Clinic, Dunkin' Donuts, the Delta Bank. Bahamas, Fine Thread, Rogers Basketball Camp, John's Department Store, J.S. Johnson, Joker's Wild, KFC, Naughty Johnny's, and Tropical Gyros. We're back at you. It's Monday. Back at you. Another edition of Talking Heads right here on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Your boy Naughty in your company right up until 6 p.m. And uh, we got lots to talk about. We got uh, Abaco chiming in today. Going to talk uh, to, uh, obviously, Mr. Ken Hutton and, and Mr. Roscoe Thompson. Get an update on Abaco and what's all going on and get us up to snuff with that. And then, of course, uh, in the 5 o'clock hour in the, in the sports section, we'll be having a great uh, conversation with the Secretary General from the BBA, Mr. Teddy Sweeten. We'll be talking national youth uh, national championships coming up, as well as uh, the big uh, homecoming night for Jazz Chisholm over there in Florida with the Marlins. So lots to talk about coming up today. And uh, you know how we do it. You know how we get it started. You know how we get it going. All right? I want to make sure your minds are right as you chime in. All right, you're coming off the, the weekend, a long, you know, eventful weekend from what I've seen so, uh, over social media. A lot of people getting on bad. A lot of people, ha- you know, still recovering from death to deaths, both from hangovers and, and relationship-wise, too. <laughs> I do I tell you. So, I-, I want you to put the priorities where they need to be. Get your mind off the work stress. Leave the work stress at work. Deal with the school run. And let me uh, try to make it nothing but fun as we have a good ride home, okay? And how we do that, we get everybody starting with a mind-bending brain teaser. That's right. I want to know your mind's functioning. Mm-hmm. So, here, here we go. And we're playing for Joker's Wild Party Passes. Great show over there at the, the Joker's Wild. Headliner, Chad Zumark. Feature comedian, J.J. Curry. And you are a truly funny show from start to finish. And this two for one on all one and local. So, definitely take advantage of that. Doors open at 8. Showtime is at 9. Tuesday through Sunday, and we're located between the Carl and the Beach Tower over there at the beautiful Atlantis. And all you need for the show, rapid antigen test, or your Vax card, and you are good to go. You can chime in on the phone lines, 323-6232, 325-4316-325-4259. You can text us on the BTC text lines, powered by BTC, 422-GR96, 422-4796. And, of course, take us wherever you want to go. We're streaming live, guardiantalkradio.com. And we're on cable channel 969, BTC Flow channel 612. All right, so let's get it started. Got to get it started with your headliners. Who are what's making headlines in the 242? All brought to you by Fine Threads. And don't forget, they got uh, a great deal going on right now at Fine Threads. For every full-price denim jeans purchased, you get the next one of equal or lesser value absolutely free. Also buy one full price men's suit or a suit package and get half off of a boy deals going on right now galore at Fine Threads. Check them out online, finethreads.com. See all the great deals is going on. Do your shopping online, then arrange for pickup at any one of those convenient Fine Thread locations. So let's have a look at what's blazing up the pages of the Nassau Guardian, news and views that matter since 1844. And we got a lot to talk about coming in over the weekend and from the weekend, the residual of the weekend. 
and, and what's really jumping out, obviously, the major headline right now, Adrian Gibson and six others charged, and that kind of transpired today's story by Artesia Davis in today's Guardian. Long Island Member of Parliament Adrian Gibson appeared in court today on charges of abuse of power while he served as executive chairman of the Water and Sewerage Corporation under the Minutes Administration. Gibson, a lawyer, faced a total of 56 counts on allegations that he failed to declare his interest in contracts awarded by the corporation. Prosecutors allege that Gibson gained a financial advantage of over more than $1 million from contracts granted to elite maintenance and Baja, and that he laundered the uh, illicitly obtained funds by purchasing properties and vehicles. Gibson was not required to plead the charges. Also, allegedly, Gibson was aided by Elwood Donaldson, the corporation's former general manager, his cousin, Rache Gibson, his campaign general, Joan Knowles, Jerome Missick, Tanya Demerit, and Peaches Farkasin. Gibson and the co-defendants have been remanded in custody until their bail is signed. So we see how that plays out now. That's the major headline. Other headlines making noise. Let's go to the phone lines real quick. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? Hey, Nordy. How you doing, brother? Hey, JJ. Man, hey, hey, guess who I just saw a while ago? Who did you just see a while ago, JJ? 52, man. 52. Oh, you just so saw 52? I, yeah, I, I've been by his place of business, man. We had a good chat, man. Good, nice young man. But, JJ, forgive me if, if I'm a little shocked and odd right now because I can't believe this is the same JJ who say you wasn't calling my dad talk show in all the chat groups. But now here you are, like I told you, by 4.15 or 4.20 on Monday, I know I'd be hearing from you. So thank you for proving me right, JJ. So what did, yeah, I, my boy. I know, what did, what did 52 have to say, man? Man, we, um, we had a good talk about some talk shows and some good dialogue. We, we spoke about um, C. Allen, Johnson, Graham, people who could make contribution, man. None about the people calling talk show talking foolishness. You see, but I, I wouldn't debate on, on anyhow. I wouldn't really debate on the show, but see, but God is wicked. See, see, and God is so good and powerful. My God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, let me tell you something. All these members of the parliament now who in the PRB party, and I hate nobody, you know. But the Bill Davis is a fair mind to me. Telling you all the same thing with happened to Adrian and the rest of the people who, who think they this and that and that. I, 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 I know that a, a lot of them, young members of the parliament, they think they just a reach. Ain't nobody scared you all member of the parliament. Nobody scared of the mission of the police. Nobody respects the person council. We ain't in none of y'all, because y'all in your own world. Everybody needs things. And God is working. So y'all, PSS directors, start respecting the baby people. Choose with love. When we come in there, get service. Service with a smile, naughty. They need to stop. The country and all this real and dealing with they need to stop. And that's all I can say on that, my brother. There you go. Appreciate you chiming in as always, JJ. Always a good contribution, man. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Who's this? Hi, good afternoon, Nadi. What's going on? Uh, I'd just like to make a uh, comment about the situation with uh, Nima and the speaker. Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, I think what every, the point that everyone is missing is, I think Captain Russell should thank the speaker because he draw attention to the fact that Nima is probably understaffed and underfunded because that was the last that happened all over the place at the same time. And if you understaff and underfunded, you only could be one or two. But, but now my so question is, if we, if we understaffed and underfunded it, and Nima coming out of the past administration, going into this administration, well, wow, shouldn't the travel budget money been allocated a little bit better then, since we have a glaring it's, deficiency exactly in Nima? Exactly my point. Those are the type of questions when you tell me that, hey, admittedly there's a deficiency in Nima, highlighted by the speaker, then, hey, why, don't, why is there a deficiency? Yeah, but like I say. Because you know, because in, in short order in short order today you can hear from Abaco and I can guarantee you it, it, it's hurricane season and the foundation still ain't laid for the hurricane shelter in Abaco. Oh, that's exactly my point, Nadi. But you see, sometimes it takes a spark to get a fire done. So I think the speaker comment against uh, Captain Russell was just as far. You understand? Well, sometimes if you really need to get a fire started, you take some gasoline and pour right on that little spark and set it right off, and let's let's that, cleanse and burn, slash and burn and clean everything one day. Exactly, exactly, Nadi. I thank you, Nadi, for taking my call. I appreciate you chiming in, man. We on the same page, brother. You, you, you preach, man. But you know what amazes me? Every, every three, four years, we have the same conversation, and then three, four years pass, and we come right back to the same point, having the same conversation. Exactly. The more things change, the more they remain the same. That's, that's all I could see. Well, that seems to be the main way. 
because it seems that every government that comes into power, all we hear is a bunch of promises and and, and I'll be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, Carla. I, I, I think, um, <laughs> to be honest, I think Vince McMahon writing up the script for our, our politics these days. Because it's straight out of the WWE. Yeah, I agree with you, Naughty. All right, bro. Thanks for chiming in. I appreciate you, man. Have a good one. Uh, thank you. Now, I was about to get to the trivia question, but we had two callers chime in, and I have no problem with that. So let, let me give you your, your trivia question so you got your shot at your jokers while party passes. Of course, you know you got between now and and the uh, top of the news in the 5 o'clock hour to chime in, get your answers in, all right? And uh, like I said, we're playing for Joker's Wild Party Passes. So where do we start today? Because there's a lot to work with. Let me get you a good question. I, I want you to put your mind, you know, in order, in gear. I don't want to make it dead easy for you, and I don't want to make it too hard. But I want to get you, your mind flowing, you know? All right, recent survey of 100 Bahamians, 50 men, 50 women. Survey revealed. That 35% out of 100 or 35 out of 100 people surveyed said they've tried at least 15 of these in their lifetime. What is it? That's your mind bending brain teaser. Recent survey, 100 million surveyed. Survey revealed that 35% or 35 out of 100 have tried 15 of these, at least 15 of these in their lifetime. What is it? That's your brain teaser. You got between now and the top of the news in the five o'clock hour to get your answers in. So, obviously, you know, we got uh, commentary coming in on the text lines uh, regarding, you know, the headlines, the main headlines as far as uh, the uh, MP from Long Island. Great show, Naughty, as usual. People need to realize if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. That's the age-old age old adage for that. Some of the other, other uh, headlines making noise. Speaker should apologize. PM Minister says he ordered Beaches Parks Authority to overspend. Dr. Huben Minister said he sent struggling Bahamians asking for contracts to survive during the COVID-19 pandemic to the Bahamas Public Parks and Public Beaches Authority. During his contribution on the 2022-23 uh, budget debate in the House of Assembly last Thursday, Minister defended the 86% increase in the authority's 2021-2022 budget, which happened under his watch. He argued that he was helping Bahamians to pay their rent, mortgages, and other bills. You have been a select amount of payments pay the other bills because uh, there was a lot of people displaced in that pandemic and lost their jobs that didn't get hired on by beaches and parks. You need to look at that there, boy. I think that's some political grandstanding, if you ask me. According to, uh, you know, Guardian Business, 38, or sorry, $385 million bond offering oversubscribed. So have a, have a gander at that if you're interested. Series A and Series B notes attract 3.85% and 9% respectively. Story by Paige uh, in today's Guardian Business. Be sure to check that out as well. All right. Let's keep it moving. Let's slide up into the buzz. All brought to you, of course, by John Shoes. And John reminds you, in addition to all of your fast fashions, your workwear, your new arrivals for the ladies every Monday and Tuesday, large selection for your kids, casual, formal, and, and athletic, and a wide selection for men, including the Clarks line, all right, with some great lines and looks on Clarks. John's now has small home appliances and cookware available for you as well. So be sure to check them out below locations, John's Plaza Carmichael, and the flagship store over there on Rosetta today. And remember, with John, serving you is a pleasure. But we know what the buzz is. Speaker of the house. Oh, Lord. Mr. Vogue got everybody fired up. But I don't see what all the... The posturing is, and the back and forth. Because I heard some of the same apologists for, for the current speaker. They were on the attack of the previous speaker during the previous administration when Mr. Murphy was doing what he did. And, and if you look at it, in my opinion, both of them in the past, and Mr. DeVoe right now, are playing out of the, reading out of the same playbook. They're using the same playbook. They're running the same plays. At the end of the day, a lot of people say, well, she should apologize. Well, maybe her approach and her delivery needs some work, but I think what she, what she had to say needed to be said. How it was delivered needs some work. But at the end of the day, I don't really get into the whole back and forth about how people talk to each other because I've heard some crazy things said in the House of Assembly under the protection of the House 
So this is right up there with, with them. It, it makes one makes one wonder, like much to do about nothing. You know, when when Mr. Moultrie did it in his former capacity, the PLP had lots to say. Now, when Mr. Vo is doing it, now she's being attacked. Others are crying for an apology. You shouldn't talk to MPs like that. Today, what are we in the house for? To make the country better. To move the business of the, of the government ahead. And in order, and, and indirectly, the business of Bahamians, the voters, the citizenry ahead. So we can benefit. We standing on the sideline watching a sophomoric soap opera, if you ask me. And everybody is buzzing throughout the 202. Boy, the speaker is scaring about blood. Really? Is that the conversation and the argument we want to have right now? Yes, her conduct is important, but we have more pertinent issues in this country to deal with right now than worrying if our speaker is politically correct or not. Considering we saw a lot of political correctness from the prior speaker, Mr. Moultrie, and then in the previous PLP administration, come on, Mr. Smith was a little hot shot when he got his opportunity to, 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 to be speaker, as deputy speaker. He used to pop off too. So, so what's the deal? I just think it's a grandiose urination contest between every speaker these days. Who's going to be the biggest, the baddest, and the most brash? They're going to be recognized. You're going to remember me as a speaker. Oh, yeah. You're going to remember me. Anyway, into the, uh, let me know how you feel. Chime on in. Let me check the text lines real quick, and then we'll get up into the global warming. We're seating up the planet in 60 seconds or less, all brought to you, of course, by KFC Nassau. Good afternoon, Naughty. The minister was describing the urgency to help people in the pandemic. One was the lady who got ran over from her boyfriend. I watched his contribution. Okay, back to my point. If you're going to send a certain section of Bahamians to park in beaches who are suffering and been displaced, send all. There was a multitude of Bahamians. And that's great that you sent them there and you provided for them, but now look where we're at. Look at, look at, the, look at, the, look at the, uh, the fallout that's left behind. But I get your point. Hey, if that hits home to you, that hits home to you. That's great. And despite doing all of this, Minus popularity rating is still horrible. It still sucks. So where are we? What are, what are the qualifications to be the Speaker of the House? That would be awesome to know. That would really be awesome to know. What are the actual qualifications to be Speaker of the House? Naughty darkness always comes to light, but people doing the dark will surely come to light. That's the age of saying. And, you know, there's another one. I was born in the night, but not last night. So come correct. Don't come with, you know, BS and no spin story. Let's, let's get the actual factual information out there and let's bring it all to light so we could be better moving forward. Bingo. Boy, that didn't take long. We got a winner already off the text line. And the info is real easy. Bahamians that were surveyed, all right, said they've tried at least 15 of, theirs, of these in their lifetime. Well, you know what it is? The correct answer was diets. They've tried at least 15 diets in their lifetime. And when you think about some people who like to diet and lose weight, that could be very well true. That could very well be true. So winner, winner, chicken dinner. Send me your info to the person who just texted me that so we could get you all hooked up and coordinated. And let's slide right in right now to the planet in 60 seconds or less, all brought to you by KFC Nassau. And don't forget, KFC Nassau now open until midnight. The drive throughs all the drive throughs open until midnight at your favorite KFC location. So you can get that finger-licking feeling and that flavor, all right, right up until midnight at your favorite KFC location. And don't forget, on Tuesdays tomorrow, it's another crazy Tuesday, and only at KFC, you get that, that great Great deal going on. You get to, to satisfy your crispy fried chicken cravings with eight pieces of chicken for the wow price of only $15. So taste the KFC Crunch on Tuesdays. It's crazy wild good. And you got until midnight in the drive-thru to get there. All right? So let's slide on in and let's see what's heating up the planet in 60 seconds or less, like I said. All brought to you by KFC Nassau. And where do we start? Julie Cruz, whose uh, haunting voice added just the right touches to David Lynch's uh, Twin Peaks and Blue Velvet, died last week. She was 65. Justin Bieber announced Friday that he has been diagnosed with Ramsey Hunt syndrome, which has left the right side of his face paralyzed, which is why he's had to research. 
Britney Spears married her fiance Sam Ashgari last Thursday night in the backyard of her mansion in Thousand Oaks, California. Among her 100 guests, Madonna, Paris Hilton, Drew Barrymore, Selena Gomez, Maria Menudos, Paris Hilton, her husband Carter Rayum, and mom Kathy Hilton, and Donatella Versace. Britney's estranged parents, Jamie Spears and Lynn Spears, and her sister, Jamie Lynn Spears, were not there, nor were her sons, Sean Preston, 16, and Jaden James, 15. A so-called dating expert says the one way to find out if a guy is trustworthy and honest is to ask him if, he's ha if he has any allergies. If he says yes or no, that's good. If he says, not that I know of, you can't trust him. Former Dallas Cowboys running back Don Perkins, a six-time Pro Bowler during an eight-year career as a Cowboy running back, died Thursday. He was 84. What else is happening? Rebel Wilson celebrated Pride Month last week by introducing the, the world to her new girlfriend. In New Jersey, Costco says you'll soon have to be a Costco member in order to fill up at one of their gas stations. Boy, everybody getting all, all touchy-feely-feely. -touchy -feely -feely. And finally, the rumor going around was that, that the woman Aaron Rodgers is dating now had the witch name of Blue Earth. She says, y'all are nuts, and her name is just Blue. No, boy, I don't know. Aaron Rodgers looked like a warlock to me anyhow. So it is, you know, it is what it is. Listen, man, it was two weeks, Texter. Your two weeks is up. You could win again. But you is an old, you's an old boy. Look, you're a, triv you're a trivia junkie. I'll tell you that much. Let's go to the phone lines. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Who's this? Yeah, hello, Naughty. Hey, what's going on, my brother? Right, yeah, my brother. Everything all right? I'm good, man. How about you? Uh, everything good, you know. I mean, it could be better, but I guess do it like that. You know what they say? Ain't no use complaining. Them said listening don't even want to talk your business. They ain't really trying to help. Ain't nobody yeah, listening. Yeah, no, but uh, you see how important that disclosure uh, arc is? And the Freedom of Information Act. I agree with you both. You know, they, they, they have to. It's closed. You see, people don't be disclosing, and they ain't taking that serious. Now, if they're taking that serious, now you don't know what's going on. But, you know, I mean, Carl, I'll be honest with you, man. How long have you been on this Ponderosa and on this reservation, you know? Mm -hmm. In our time, though, how many times have you seen a politician from various political divides, not any particular party in particular, from all the parties, have you seen... Some that go in as like $100 heirs and $1,000 heirs, and then at the end of five years, come out and realize, are you floaty? Yeah, or she floaty? How they get so gunky? Where, where do all this ah, come from? Ah, right, right. You see, so what they see, see until they take the disclosure serious, and it's supposed to be publication every year. That don't happen. No, and, and, we, and you know who's to blame? Us, because we keep allowing it to happen. Yeah, I agree with you. Maybe we allowed it to happen. And devil, that's what cleared them as well. Because you go on in there for two years, three years, and suddenly you're a multimillionaire. And, and this is not the first time we've seen it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that, that come out to play. And I can say this too. We need to put some, this is what I say to somebody one day. They need to put a judge or a magistrate to disclose you. That will let me know that they're pretty serious about it. Right, exactly. And then let the, the deputy person who in that be like maybe, it ain't got to be a citizen person, it could be a retired person. Right, a former magistrate or whatever, and give them an opportunity in their yeah. retirement to still make, you know, to earn a living, because some of them do not like to go into retirement. And not in a bad way, but they're still active. They still have a lot right. to contribute. Right, one of them say, man, listen, we got you and you and the chairman of the disclosure. And they know the law. They know what to look for. Instead right. Instead, you putting one of these rev and this one, they know nothing. But you know that that don't make no sense. Well, I appreciate. Then, Go ahead. Uh, one more thing I'll say, and then let the deputy be one. Or even could be a former. Uh, assistant commissioner of the police could be the deputy. There you go. Well, we got a great. And then, the, and then the public will say, "Hey, they look like they're serious with this." And everybody. And if you put somebody there who's who's like no skin in the game, no horse in the race, just calling it right down the middle. Wow, you ain't got no problem. Reason. Impartiality is, is is the order of the day when it comes to that. But in this month, you're supposed to have everything together. Not one one policy. Right. Policy. And then if you don't, then 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 we need to start. And that's right. And the judge, they know the law. They know where this person is supposed to go. And then the public will take you serious. And then you can't come after three years and say, well, I got a million dollars where you declared, yeah, one. You only had, you only had two hundred thousand dollars. 
Right, where you got all the rest from. But listen, be sure to chime back in at 5 o'clock, man. We got uh, Teddy Sweeten, the Secretary General of the BBA, Bahamas Baseball Association, talking Andre Rogers, National uh, Baseball Championships coming up, and a big uh, honorary home night, homecoming night for Josh Chisholm over there in Florida. So I think you'll be yeah. interested. I know he's a baseball man. But I, w- I will say one more thing before you... Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, the, 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 uh, I think Mr. Prime Minister Brave Davis, he has to get little things in order. You see some of these... He got to start some, pulling some leashes, man. Tighten yeah, up the leash on some people. Jerk a leash or two. Show them, hey, it's all these, good. But y'all don't make me look bad. Women, right? They feel like they, they don't arrive when they lodge and in charge. Like, I don't know what tell, tell the tell the police officer. You know who I is? Do you know who I am? Right. See, that, then you got this next one, the speaker, which I think was out of order. She do it the same way, but only think she's doing it different Now, model. see, th- th- let me tell you something. In the house, everybody's be slapping up in the house, all right? So I don't want nobody catching feelings because all kind of insults and get-offs and jokes just get thrown across the floor in there. Yeah, but I talk about specifically how she jump on that, on What's his name on that fella? <laughs> on the, what's his name? So, the, the, the she, Nemo. Yeah, yeah. And then, that was not Nemo's job. Nemo's job ain't to go when one house. Nemo's normally the coordinate. No, I understand all of that, but we still yeah. need to figure out why. And we can talk to Abaco on the break. Why that, that, that foundation for, yeah. for the Harkin Shelter is still not built, not done. You know what I mean? Yeah, So, yeah, you know, yeah. I think some of the things she said had to be said, but the way she said it needs to be worked on. If yeah, you know what I mean? She, the delivery. The order. All right, man, we'll go to the break. We'll talk soon, man. Always appreciate hearing from you and your contributions, man. We'll be right back at you on the flip side of the break right here. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. We'll be talking uh, to Abaco. That's right, getting caught up with uh, Ken Hutton and, of course, Mr. Roscoe Thompson. All coming up on the flip side of the break right here. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Beulah Gal, can you believe this? We are now the patrol queens of the neighborhood. We now lodge and in charge. So we need to check out what's going on in everybody's yard. What about that gun that we know that Junior and his homeboys does right? We can. But we could be in deep trouble if they find out. We need to report what we see, Beulah. When you call Crime Stoppers, they just answer your call in Miami. So then we can report everything? Guns? Where they hiding the drugs? Who shoot who? Who part of which gang? Or who disturbing the peace with the loud music and the motorcycles? Then our neighborhood will be the best in the Bahamas and everybody gonna want to come live here and then our house price will go up gal so what we waiting on what's the number if you see something say something let us all pitch in and stop the crime before it's your time call 328-8477 from Nassau or 242-300-8477 from the family islands or text us through the crack crime Bahamas app stop the crime before it's your time preparing for a hurricane can make all the difference in safeguarding lives by knowing what actions you should take to reduce the effects of hurricane disaster. Get all the facts of the potential of having insurance, impact resistant windows, home emergency power, surge protectors, essential supplies, plus so much more before the storm. After the storm, where to purchase building or cleaning supplies, waste disposal, medical care, which auto shop to go to after driving through flooded streets and more. The Nassar Guardian's Hurricane Guide will help to make sure everyone knows what to do in the event a hurricane approaches. Take advantage of this double insertion opportunity plus 15 radio commercials. Contact us today at 302-2300 or your account executives. Will you be prepared? You don't have to rise and shine to enjoy Dunkin's Big Breakfast Bundle. Our all-day breakfast sandwich made with your choice of sausage, ham, or bacon comes with crisp hash browns, a freshly brewed medium coffee, your favorite Dunkin' Donut, and a bottle of refreshing Dasani water. The Big Breakfast Bundle will satisfy you, whether you power up your day with Dunkin' Big Breakfast Bundle. The Bahamas runs on Duncan. Refined style with elegant taste. The fine threads is your place. If you want those slots hemmed or just taking the waist. Then fine threads is your place. If you want to look suave and never near everywhere you go. Like you're supposed to be in a video. Want to step out and look great? Then fine threads is your place. 
Refined style with elegant taste Then fine thread is your place Is your place Is your place When I had got prostate cancer My family didn't know if I was going to live At Cancer Treatment Centers of America Within days, I got an appointment They presented me with treatment options And they set up a robotic prostatectomy When my scans came back, there are no signs of cancer they don't see you as a number, they see you as a part of family. I'm going on with my life. That's a real gift. Call us at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. A local paper in Grand Bahama is back. Every Tuesday as a section of the Nassau Guardian. Gas stations, pharmacies, Western Bakery, and Bellevue Gifts. Daily and, of course, on Tuesdays, too. Want to reach your Grand Bahama audience? Then call Barefoot Marketing at 827-4578. Or message them for ad rates via their Facebook page. Advertising opportunities now include classified ads, too. Keep up with all the latest Grand Bahama news in the Guardian newspaper every Tuesday. Talking as Guardian Radio 96.9 FM continues right here, right now. Let me check the text lines real quick. Naughty, that's exactly what I was calling for. We need an ombudsman to govern these politicians. I bet no politician will ever, ever steal again. Naughty, they need to figure out, one, why Russell didn't know there was another tornado. Two, why he had to call the Met office to find out. Three, why a member of government had to call Russell to get an up unreachable. All of these are coordination failures. Nima is dropping the ball. Well put. Those are some valid points right there. Let's go to the phone lines real quick. Talking ads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Who's this? Talking ads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Who's this? I got Bremen here. Hey, what's Bremen. going on, Bremen? What's happening, man? Yeah, I'm right here, man. What you got for me today? I'll let you know. Yeah, it's a beautiful show. You raise, you raise things, and you, 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 you're not biased. You know, and you give them... Well, if you let some PRPs talk and some f and M's talk, they'll say I'm quite biased. And, and, you, and, you, and you give, you know, you give a beautiful elaboration without biasness. So you continue on, but... Well, I appreciate that coming from you, Bremen, and I know you're, you're a connoisseur of all these talk shows and you contribute to a lot, man, so I appreciate that coming from you, man. You got anything else? On, I appreciate you, your Bremen, and you know you can always chime in whenever right here. All right. Let's uh, get into it. We got to take the Dunkin' Donuts coffee break. All right, and don't forget, you don't have to rise and shine to enjoy Dunkin's Big Breakfast Bundle. Enjoy a Dunkin' all-day breakfast sandwich, hash browns, fresh brewed medium coffee, your favorite flavored do- uh, Dunkin' Donut, and a bottle of Dasani water. Power up your day with Dunkin's Big Breakfast Bundle. The Big Breakfast Bundle will satisfy you whether you're an early bird or not. And while you're at it, try one of those coconut refreshers. I suggest the purple pomegranate. They are all G-O-O-D good. And all of this, plus the donuts and the coffees, Hot or cold, waiting on you at your favorite Dunkin' location. Downtown Bay Street, Paradise Island, Palmdale, Burnley Road with the drive through East Street South with the drive through The newest location, Carmichael, and both out at the airport. So no reason for you not to be running on Dunkin'. But right now, chiming in with me today on Talking Heads, no strangers to the show, representing Abaco, you know, and always doing a great job getting me caught up. I got Mr. Ken Hutton, the president of the Abaco Chamber of Commerce, and Mr. Roscoe Thompson, he is uh, part of the uh, Spring City local government and all of that. Whatever Roscoe that is, it's it long been, and I can't remember it all the time. I'm prone to show up memory loss sometimes. So I'm glad to have both of you guys back on. It's been a minute. Roscoe, Ken, how the heck are you? I'm good. I'm not sure if uh, Ken's online today. All right. Well, no problem. We'll, we'll, we'll roll with you, and if Ken chimes in, that's fine. If not, you know, we got lots to talk about. First and foremost, Roscoe, all is well with you and yours? Yeah, man, can't complain. How about you? I'm good. Thank God for life. You know, saying the more things change, the more they stay the same. All right, it is now. <laughs> I need to know. Have we had any more uh, updates or improvements or continuation of the foundation of the Hurricane Shelter in Albuquerque? Or is it still doing uh, Still, Still the same as far as I know. Um, I haven't been up there. So I, last week, I've been a little under the weather, so I haven't been out of the house. But as far as I but know, let, it's uh, still right there. But let's be honest. We're in hurricane season. And and and, and barring some major miracle, that's, that's not going to be finished this hurricane season. No, 
no, that never, not 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 in this lifetime. So now we have to ask a question: <clears throat> Where are we right now, presently? Are, are we dealing with a lot in Abaco? Are we dealing with a lot of political posturing and promises now that are, that aren't coming to fruition that were offered up on the campaign trail? Because right now. For all the, the issues Abaco had with the past administration, seems like they got the same issues with this administration. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the more things change, the more they stay the same. I mean, we, we still spinning wheels in the mud, no pun intended. Posturing is a, is a good word to use. Um, you know, a lot of promises were made, and, and still Abaco, uh, I have not got an update, you know, even after the budget, if the DRA is back up, um, you know, doing home repairs, that type of stuff. Uh, hopefully, you know, the township is, we are now holding a town hall meeting in Spring City this Thursday to hear the concerns of the residents of Spring City, you know, i.e. the domes, the illegal businesses that are going on there. Uh, you know, issues that are pertaining to them, and then we'll have one in Marsh Harbor in the next couple months. And see, the, the thing about it is, our meetings now again, Roscoe, but we're not, Abaco's not getting what they need. They, they, well, no, we I, don't I, need I, to have meetings. You all need to have mandates, sanctions, amendments, and, and allowed to rebuild <laughs> Abaco. I mean, do what you all need to do. Yeah. It's not like yeah, Abaco is I, I saying it, we need the sanctions, it, it, we like, need all of this lifted, and we need, you know, we need to get it all. No, we need help from the government. We need this. No, you all are just saying remove the red tape. Let us have some right. easy access to doing our business. Just, we could I mean, rebuild been, Abaco by ourselves. We ain't asking for no help. We've been saying that for months. We've been saying that for since the government changed. Um, you know, and it, it seems like it's always going on deaf deaf's ears i don't know why you know especially with this administration why they haven't taken that initiative knowing the situation that abaco is in and you know just to use an example you know they were promising oh well we're going to pave uh, pelican shore roads um and of course that wasn't in the budget you know um which is a main strip uh of a neighborhood that got destroyed um Eastern Shores, you know, still no, no, no word on the water situation out there. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that are are concerning that are, you know, I don't know what's going on, man. It, it's it's frustrating as hell being in local government and sitting on council and being a voice because it's it's like beating a dead horse. Um, what what do you do? Can you can you take your government? You know, it's not like you could take your government to court, you know? No, I mean, and like I say, the, the, where, where, where do we go? Where, where does Abaco go from here? Where do Bahamians go? Because it, it sets a precedent. Are we going to be stuck I, in this every time? Because, every time? I mean, no offense, and I, and I don't want to rehash pain for memories, but let's be honest, Dorian isn't the last major storm that we're going to face. No. We'll get another one at some point. You know, we just had, you know, that little tropical storm that, you know, dumped a, a ton of rain on Freeport. You know, we got a little bit of wind and some rain here. But, you know, what What if, you know, you, you're faced with a Category 2 at some point? You know, what are the people going to do? Where are the shelters? You know, are, are houses being built back up to code? You know, we have some issues right now of some houses being built that, you know, we're not sure if are, are up to code, you know, and, and it's, it's frustrating. You know, you, you go to Ministry of Works, you inform them about it, you know, and as far as I know, you know, when you're doing a floor and you're putting in your posts, they should be on eight, eight foot centers, um, you know, and you got some that are going on, you know, 12 foot centers, uh, which I think is a little too too wide, and then you start getting the bow in the floor. Um, you know, so there's there's a lot of things still going on here, Nordy, that need need attention. And you know, this administration blasted the previous administration, but boy, I could tell you, 
I don't know if this administration is really any better than the previous administration. At least things were going on. What? Abaco got buyers from us now, too. I mean, it's it, not the only time I've heard this. I've been hearing this now. We got some people with buyers from us, eh? Boy, I don't know. So it, what, it's, what, it's, what, 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 where do we go from here? Now? Where's the next question now? How do we get to where we many, need to be? Because obviously, the meeting elements of it. You're having meetings again. Isn't that going, taking a couple of steps back? Didn't you have meetings already before pertaining yeah, to all well, of this, this? This, this, this meeting that we're have is actually a town, a town hall meeting for the residents. Local government is required to have one every, you know, usually twice a year or minimum once a year. And, you know, we haven't had one in spring city. So it, it's a lot going on out there in Spring City, and a lot of things need to be addressed. And yeah, there's a lot of concerns that we've already brought to the attention of the government. You know, the laydown site, the fire, the dump site, the domes, you know, whatever it may be. But this is just adding more pressure to them. You know, I, I don't know where else to go, you know, the Guardian, I'm on the radio every every couple of weeks. You know, you do a newspaper article. Um, you, it, it just seems like they're not listening. I, I don't know if they're not listening or maybe not checking because you have to you have to hear the cries of the citizenry. You have to hear the the, the complaints and concerns of, of voters and taxpayers that that, that want to get on with their life. You have to know that and be aware that that the, the island was ravaged by a hurricane. And, and not just any hurricane, a major Cat 5 hurricane. Yeah, the, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, So I, why I, I the just, temporary amnesia? Why the, the, the what's going on approach? We know what's happening. We need to deal well, you with want, what we're you dealing with. You want me to be honest? Because they got what they wanted. They got two seats in South Abaco. Let's call a spade a spade. So now they got what they want, and now ain't, they ain't checking that, for nobody? I mean, that's... Uh, that's how I how, how how I look at it right now because but in, then you have to look at it. No, no. In eight months of me and Ken Hutton and others fighting for it to be removed, all of this stuff, something should have started. Something should have been done. The DRA should have been kicked back off. Social services should be helped. You know, there should be things that are going on, and it's not. Like I said, at least under the pre and listen to me carefully, people. At least under the previous administration, we had the DRA up and running. Yes, there were issues with the DRA, social service, but things were happening. Right now, I, I, I don't know what to say. Yes, there were mistakes made under the previous administration, but in eight months, if, if this is their track record of this administration, God help us for the next four years. I, I, I often wonder, like, if we're now getting into the second year, we're approaching the second year of this administration, when we start looking at it, we're, we're in June now. Right. When we look up, December could be here. As we get into 2023, are we going to be here a year from now still having this conversation? <laughs> That's my biggest fear, Roscoe. That's my, and I don't want to put it out there and, 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 for lack of a better word, get Abaco, the majority of Abaco, even more peeled than they already are. But, I mean, if, if this were at now, it doesn't bode well confidence-wise or, or, or the fact that, that, that did you actually have, have belief that this is going to get done? Because if I was in that situation, I would not buy, put any faith into what I'm hearing from the politicians. F and M up here, because look where we at. We're still in the same spot. If I was down there, yeah. I, I'd be honest with you. I'd probably go rogue. I'd try to figure out how to get my materials in and start rebuilding myself. And who don't like it, don't like it. Tough. I, I need to take care of me. I, you know, Nordy, I, I, it, it's just an easy solution. Drop the red tape and the duty and VAT on, and it just eliminates a lot of hassle. Allow the people, you know, I know you got to have some structure to it, but it seems, again, they don't listen to the locals here on the island. And that's you to know, me, is the biggest thing. He who feels it knows. It shouldn't be second and third out opinion from reporters and columnists and journalists and broadcasters in New Providence as well as family members because they're going on second and third out information. It may be actual and factual, but it's not that first line. We're in it. Right. We feel it. We know it. 
Yeah. And, and the fact that, that, that it's just the cold shoulder being turned by both administrations to Abaco is really, you know, is really what galls me. But what we're going to do now is take a quick break, and on the flip side of the break, we'll get into the news. On the flip side of the news, we'll wrap things up with Roscoe, and then we'll get into our conversation in, uh, in the sports segment coming up with Mr. Teddy Sweeten, Secretary General of the BBA. We're talking national baseball championships. We're talking about homecoming night over there to Florida, Marlins Park, to go celebrate Jazz Chisholm. But before we get to all that, we'll be wrapping up with Roscoe Thompson in Abaco. It's Monday, and we're talking all things Abaco. And guess what? Fourth edition they've been on since we started two or three months ago. Guess where we're at right now? Same spot. Ain't nothing changed. Still no foundation for the hurricane shelter. Still got all kind of red tapes. No easy access for folks to get supplies and to rebuild and so on and so forth. And a lot of buyers from us now coming out of Abaco. We'll finish talking uh, all things Abaco with Roscoe on the flip side of the break. Wrap that up. So if you got your questions and calls, chime them on in. Clocking Edge continues right after the break. Need to satisfy your late night munchies? KFC drive throughs are open and frying until midnight every night of the week. Whether you're craving juicy KFC chicken, fries and biscuit, or one of our signature KFC sandwiches, we've got you covered with 100% KFC flavor. Catch some late night vibes and take a ride to your neighborhood KFC for after dark satisfaction. Last call to get fueled by KFC fried chicken is midnight. Late night cravings at KFC Nassau. It's finger licking good. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. George Shoes and Accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. Whatever the occasion, John's is confident you will find what you're looking for. Among our always growing collection of amazing and trendy styles, we cover women, men, children, the whole family. Together with John's great prices and helpful and friendly customer service, your experience in shopping with us will be time well spent. Too busy to come in store? Shop with us online. www.johnshoes.com John's also now carry small home appliances. So come on in today at John's. Where we put fashion at your feet. Around the world, Cleveland Clinic is recognized as a leader in healthcare. Our team of experts relentlessly pursues the best for our patients. From groundbreaking cancer research to state of the art heart surgery, life saving innovations happen here every day. When it's time to travel for your health, it's time to travel to Cleveland Clinic. Your destination for care, for every care in the world. To learn more, visit clevelandclinic.org slash Caribbean. Fidelity, we're good for you. I used to think of the bank as my personal ATM machine. If I wanted a new car, new furniture, a weekend trip to Miami... No problem, just max out the credit card or top up my loan. I was a big baller until I realized that 75% of my salary was going to pay back all those loans. Fidelity's personal financial coaching was the best solution. Fidelity gave me a plan with a debt consolidation loan that has a built-in savings that pays 5% interest. I now only have one low monthly payment plus money in my pocket. Give Fidelity Bank a call at 356-7764 in Nassau or 352-66. Visit any of Fidelity's locations or visit a website at fidelitygroup.com. Fidelity, we're good for you. Let Duncan put the good back into morning with our delicious breakfast sandwiches. Enjoy a fluffy egg topped with American cheese and bacon, ham, or savory sausage on your choice of a flaky croissant, a warm bagel, or a toasted English muffin. Choose your favorite and have breakfast just the way you like it. Make it a combo with golden hash browns and a freshly brewed coffee and get rising and shining with Dunkin' Breakfast Sandwiches today. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin'.
We're back at you at Garden Radio 96.9 FM. Talking Heads continues right now. We're into the 5 o'clock hour. 5.08 p.m. is the time. Going to wrap things up with Roscoe Thompson down there in Abaco. Roscoe, today is the what? The 13th? So, we still got Roscoe? Yeah, I'm okay, here. Okay, okay, okay. My, my, my headphone dipped out. So, today is the 13th. I, I, I say I chime in on the 27th, man. Can you do the 27th? You and Ken, that's two weeks from, mon- two weeks from the day on a Monday. Sounds good, man. All right, so we definitely pencil that in for the latest update in Abaco. But basically, I mean, is is has there been any any good news out of Abaco? Anything? Somebody's tree bearing fruit? Somebody caught a big fish or two over the weekend? I mean, anything? <laughs> anything? I, I don't know. I mean, I you know, Nordy, I'd like to see this. And I know it's a big issue all over, but we've raised it a couple times, man. I'd like to see this illegal construction stopped by foreign nationals, man. It's that's it's the cry all, all around. I know, I know, I know. But it, it, you know, unless you keep on bringing it up, uh, you know, you got got to keep on reminding people about it. I mean, I, I don't know what the solution to the answer is. Um, I have some ideas, but man, it, it's got to it's got to be done. The the truckloads of wood that is coming from our land our dump site is um it'll it'll blow your mind i had somebody send me a message this week actually yesterday of you know the people removing lumber out of there and it's only one reason to be removing lumber out of there but why is it that i'm trying to wrap my head around this Residents of Abaco got the red tape, got, got, got to spin meals in the mud, got to deal with, with campaign promises that, that have been, remain to be seen. But foreign nationals, under whatever circumstances and pretenses, are building? Yeah. How is this possible? Uh, I mean, that lo- if, we, if we're leading towards shanty towns now, and people building up in that kind of way. I mean, when are we going to deal with it? When are we going to deal with it, the property owners who have facilitated it for years? When are we going right, to deal with that, the, the, the foreign nationals who are addressed. illegally setting up? When, when is it going to be intervention? But a lot of these homes, that ruling, when that ruling was made, you know, that was to do with existing homes and that no new ones could be built. So why, why is it being allowed? Why? Why are these homes being allowed to be built? You know, if they're not going through town planning, you know, they're breaking the law. Some of it's on crown land. Some of it's on crown land under Bahamians that, you know, shouldn't be doing it. Um, You know, it's... and, And these are issues that I brought up at the local government conference in, in Nassau over, you know, two weeks ago. Um, it, it's just, and it's, it's issues that continue to, to bother us, you know, and it, it, it's, it's one set of rules for another and uh, another set of rules for another group. I, I Roscoe, man, listen, I wish there was more that I could do. I, I, I know a lot of people in New Providence say the same thing. I wish more we could do, but it's just, you want to help, but you can't almost help because if you send things down, you still got to go through red tape and process to get it. You you, yeah. you you want to know where your tax dollars is going, and and there's still no foundation on the on the hurricane shelter. I mean, yeah. I'm, at what point? I mean, my question is, at what point is the powder keg known as Abaco going to just really pop off and explode? Because people got to be frustrated. Well, I think when you see gas go up, well, I shouldn't say go up because in the Keys it is above eight dollars a gallon. Um, but when you see gas hit eight dollars, I think that might be a uh, an initial, you know, something there. That Man, look, yeah, it, 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 it tickling eight dollars here in New Providence right now. But see, I don't understand why the government doesn't put a, a soft cap on on VAT on it. You know, there if it's eight dollars, they're getting eighty cents a a gallon. Why don't they, you know, do a thirty cents cap and pass the savings on to the Bahamian people? I, I just don't understand it, or some some incentive to to assist the Bahamian public in, in moving forward. You know, that, that would be a good way. 
I mean, you know, I mean, I understand they cut a lot of stuff and they they did things with that and and this and that. But my question is, does any government, and I will say this, does any government really look at balancing the budget? Because we're always on speculation of, you know, tourism dollars. And here in Abaco, in my township, we have a budget of $283,000. I can't spend more than $283,000, Naughty. If I do, I could get in trouble. I just can't. That's my budget. Here's a question coming in off the off the text lines. Naughty, I have a question for you guys. Mr. Thompson, what are the actual MPs in Abaco doing? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Hmm. Did did you hear that one? <laughs> yeah, I heard it. Well, were you I, trying to phrase it? All right, I'll give you a chance to I don't know. I don't know how to phrase it. I mean there's but I know you know how to phrase it. Maybe you just can't say it on okay, the radio the way you want to phrase it. How about this? There are two sitting PLP MPs. Are they going to speak out against the PLP government? No. That's the easiest way to, wow. to phrase that. But they had so much to say on the campaign trail. Promises a comfort to a fool, my friend. They promise you the world. The promise, and they promise, and they promise. And when the time comes, you know, at the conference, oh, I heard that local government was getting an increase in budget and, you know, oh, well, you know what our increase is, is that they'll take 10% from uh, licensing and, and property tax and put in the, you know, aside in the consult. I said, that's a joke. I don't, don't even believe that because if it stays in consolidated fund, government's going to spend it. They're not going to give it to local government. I said, now, if they put it in writing that the and it he said up to ten percent, so that could be two percent, that could be one percent. I mean, it, it, I don't have no faith, naughty. I, I really don't. Well, we got to just keep making noise, I guess, Roscoe, until it gets done. I mean, you got to have faith or not. I, I know you got you may not have faith in the administration, past and present, but I know you got faith in Abaco and the people in Abaco and the citizens yeah. of Abaco. So you all gotta that's, you all gotta stick together. That's why I continue to come on every every. And you know what they say about the squeaky just, wheel, man. The squeaky wheel eventually will get the oil that it deserves, the most oil. So I, you all continue to be the squeaky wheel. Yeah, that's what we got to do. You know, I j just try to keep people notified of what what's going on. You but know, and do, that's do me a favor. I'm I'm interested to know what the MPs are really doing. So next time we talk, bring me up the stuff on to actually what's going on in the yeah constituencies and what's being done, so on and so forth. Well, because you know, I know like the Texas is saying, couple... what are the MPs doing? I mean, not now that's peak. They're interested in in the problem. What's going on with the MPs? Well, I know they had a couple containers of furniture come in a, a, a container that a couple of days ago come in. Um, to, from one, I don't know which MP it was, but that they were dispersing it to residents. So, I, I mean, that, that's really all I, you know, I, I haven't even heard more about the, the housing project that Joe, uh, Joe Beth Davis, uh, Colby Davis said in regards to the housing, when will that kick off, um, up here, you know, to try to get these people try to get the people from out of domes and into homes. Yeah, what's the urgency on that? I mean, I, I know she's gung-ho up here in New Providence building and very proud of what she's put up. So why can't we see that continue in Abaco? Considering the domes are there, considering you have two MPs been. that were on the campaign trail promising the world and, and, and trying to, to deliver what the F&M failed to deliver on to Abaco. So, yeah, maybe you should get her involved. Maybe she I thought got Abaco would have been her, her first, yeah. her first preference. You know, not not disregarding Nassau, but I I would have thought you know to get people transitioned and to get them from out of the domes. Well, you know, you when, know I, and when, I, when I look at her as an MP, she's very ambitious, very opportunistic. So, you know, yeah, it, it, you know, in, in, in her in her mantra of racking up points and and, and you know doing or appear to be doing, then this should be another good move for the slide and then say, look, let's put up some homes in Abaco, quality homes that aren't in, in, in flood zone areas and so on well, and so forth. You, 
you know as well as I know, it all comes down to money, and it all comes down to if it's in the budget. And, you know, I, I they could get mad at me for saying this, but they increase uh, the traveling expenditure from $4.1 million, you know, which... You know what I could do with four point one million in in construction and labor costs. What, I what just, could you do? I, that, that I just don't understand that. What I could do with four point one million, boy, I could I could retire somewhere else in the world that don't have yeah, power cuts and so on and so <laughs> forth. How did I dish like that? I, no, I, I'm talking just an increase that they put in travel expenditures. Why didn't they use that? Well, I asked that question know, earlier. If if if, if, if Nima is deficient and has deficiencies and needs more funding, why Why was more money allocated to the travel budget and not to NEMA? I heard you when you said that. It, it's just like here. Why? An example, if you're using $4.1 million for travel, why didn't you put that for the DRA or, you know, or some sort of, uh, some sort of incentive you know, the housing department to allow the minister to get. That's why I just think it's a lot of hot air. And it just as I say, it, under any administration, you know, you can promise and you can promise and you can promise. But, you know, until action is taken, a promise is just a comfort to a fool. And I think I think voters are now stop. You know, they won't be considered fools anymore. So I think, you know. Politicians need to come correct stuff and forward and realize, you know, the same old, same old ain't going to work anymore. It's 2022 going into 2023. You need to step up your game, period, across the board. We'll see. You well, know, like I said, like I said, and, I, and I'll say it on, on the air again, from coming 2026 or whenever the election is, you know, the people just go vote the PLP out. It ain't like they could be voting for another party. And even though you know where I stand in politics... It's going to be, it, it's every five years now, we're voting somebody out. We're not voting somebody in. So very true. And that's why it's become a grandiose ping pong game. Ping pong is a roller coaster ride, you know? Yeah. The political hokey pokey. You put one foot in, you take the next foot out. You, you know, you put a yellow foot in, you take a red foot out. You do the hokey pokey. <laughs> yeah, that's how it is. So we'll talk yeah. again next Monday, Roscoe, because I, I got to get to the break. And right, I, I got to talk with uh, Teddy Sweden from the BBA. But definitely always appreciate appreciate you chiming in and being so candid. Regards to everybody in Abaco, regards to Ken. And I'll talk to both of you guys two weeks from now, Lord Spare Life, right here on Talking Edge. And hopefully you all have something positive to tell me out of Abaco. Not more of the same old, same old. We'll see, buddy. Because we'll next see. by the next time, if you chime in and there's nothing positive, two weeks from that date, we'll be going live from Abaco with Talking Heads. And I interviewing everybody. <laughs> and I going down to two MPs, offices, constituents, and see what's really going on. Yeah, all right. That sounds like a plan, my I brother. mean, I'm, I'm looking at one MP and I'm saying, boy, I hope he don't take as long to deliver on campaign promises as he, as he did to declare his citizenship. You know, if not, we could be there for a while. <laughs> and remember who remember who was the one who got him to do it. One call this video, one call him, and he declared, right? So let me come to Abaco. Yeah. Let me see what I need to do. And let's put the power of the callers to work as well as talking heads. Because Abaco need to get right. And it's not your fault. It's the past administration and the present administration. They need to get you right. Let's make Abaco great again. What do you say? I agree, brother. All right, man. Much love to you and yours. We'll talk soon, bro. Be safe. We'll take a quick break right here on Talking Heads Guardian Radio 96.9 FM on the flip side of the break. We pick up the conversation in the realm of sports. We'll be talking with uh, the Secretary General from the BBA, the Bahamas Baseball Association, Mr. Teddy Sweeten. We're talking Andre Rogers' national championships coming up, as well as the big homecoming night to Florida to invade the Marlins Park and big up Jazz Chisholm. And if truth be known, some of them Florida Marlins popping off, having a locker room meeting, trying to tell Jazz, get right, and hating on Jazz, you didn't want me to go there with my hashtag C. Well, anyway, you know I'll, I'll wear it. Anyhow, let's go to the break right here on Talking Heads. On the flip side of the break, we're talking sports. Don't touch it. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. 
Preparing for a hurricane can make all the difference in safeguarding lives by knowing what actions you should take to reduce the effects of hurricane disaster. Get all the facts of the potential of having insurance, impact-resistant windows, home emergency power, surge protectors, essential supplies, plus so much more before the storm. After the storm, where to purchase building or cleaning supplies, waste disposal, medical care, which auto shop to go to after driving through flooded streets and more. The NASA guide will help to make sure everyone knows what to do in the event a hurricane approaches. Take advantage of this double insertion opportunity plus 15 radio commercials. Contact us today, 302-2300 or your account executives. Will you be prepared? George Shoes and Accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. Whatever the occasion, John's is confident you will find what you're looking for. Among our always growing collection of amazing and trendy styles, we cover women, men, children, the whole family. Together with John's great prices and helpful and friendly customer service, your experience in shopping with us will be time well spent. Too busy to come in store? Shop with us online, www.johnshoes.com. John's also now carries small home appliances. So come on in today at John's. Where we put fashion at your feet. Hey, Dumps, the boys, them going on a bad trip, dog. Partying and hanging on the family island. You lie! I'm telling you, Dumps. Hey, but since only enough money for one plane ticket, one of us got to fit in that bag. That look is fit inside the bag, then, T. Well, I was thinking with the perpendicularity of the bag and the spatial structure of your body, you could have just hopped in it right quick. But, T. I know Dubs are kind of small, but I can slap one handle with care stick on the wire. No, T, I'm trying to tell you, the promotion says two fly free. That means two people could go. Two? Two. I saw it. <laughs> I can take this gal, eh? <laughs> Grab your friends and head to the Family Islands. With the two fly free campaign, there's no better time than now. Go to BahamasResidence.com for more information. When I had got prostate cancer, my family didn't know if I was going to live at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Within days, I got an appointment. They presented me with treatment options, and we set up a robotic prostatectomy. When my scans came back, there are no signs of cancer. They don't see you as a number. They see you as a part of the family. I'm going on with my life. It's a real gift. Call us at Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Wow, 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 wow. KFC just put the wow in your week with the KFC Crazy Tuesday Wow Bucket. Satisfy your crispy fried eight pieces of finger-licking good chicken for the wow price of $15. And with KFC Crazy Bundles, you can add all your KFC favorites for more savings. So taste the crunch and take a KFC bite out of life. Be happy. Save at KFC. Only on Tuesdays and only at KFC. KFC Nassau. Crazy, wow, good. We're back at you right here, Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. And the conversation now flips to sports, as we do right here each and every day on uh, Talking Heads. You know, the first hour, you know, we do everything, you know, political, pop culture, you know, hot trending topics. Second hour, we do, it's all about sports. All about sports. All right? And we started off with Today in Sports History, all brought to you by Naughty Johnny's. Well worth the trip out there to the Old Fort Shopping Plaza Monday through Friday. Great for lunch and dinner. Then on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, great for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 
Breakfast starting at 9 a.m. on Saturday. Don't forget that businessman's lunch special. You're in and you're out within your lunch hour, and it's a different special daily. So be sure to check them out today. Give them a call, 377-7776. All right? Don't forget happy hour every Wednesday and Friday right out there at Naughty Johnny's. Let's jump on in. Today is Monday, June 13th, 2022. And today in sports history, in 1912, Christy Matheson got his 300th career win. 19 Cubs and the Boston Red Sox became the first teams to play at Cooperstown Doubleday Field. 1948, the New York Yankees officially retired Babe Ruth's number three and sent it to the Hall of Fame. 1978, the NHL Board of Governors unanimously agreed to the merger of the Cleveland Barons and the Minnesota North Stars. 1989, the Detroit Pistons won their first National Basketball Association title. They beat the Los Angeles Lakers in four games. In 1991, the first round of the U.S. Open Golf Tournament, uh, in the first round of the U.S. Golf of the U.S. Open Golf Tournament, a spectator was killed when lightning struck. 1994, O.J. Simpson was questioned by Los Angeles police concerning the deaths of his ex-wife and her friend, Ronald Goldman. Cal Ripken of the Baltimore Orioles tied uh, Shakio Kinugosawa's record of 2,215 consecutive games played in 1996. 1997, Vladimir Konstantinov and Vyacheslav Fetisov, both of the Detroit Red Wings, were severely injured in a car accident. 1997, the Chicago Bulls won their fifth championship in seven years. In 2000, Julius Dr. J. Irving issued a public appeal for help finding his 19-year-old son, 28th, 2000. His body was found July 6th, 2000. In 2002, the Detroit Red Wings won their 10th Stanley Cup title. After the game, Red Wings coach Scotty Bowman announced his retirement. Sports quote of the day, when you're playing against a stacked deck, compete even harder. Show the world how much you'll fight for the winner's circle. If you do, someday the, ce- uh, someday the, cellophane, the cellophane will crackle off a fresh pack, one that belongs to you, and the cards will be stacked in your favor. Pat Riley. There you have it. Another one from the, from the slick one himself, Mr. Pat Riley. All right, that's a wrap right there on Today in Sports, all brought to you by Naughty Johnny's. Well worth the trip out there to the old Ford Shopping Plaza. And right about now, you got to slide up into the home court. And what's breaking as far as local news, all brought to you, of course, by Burger King Nassau. And don't forget that mix and match going on at BK, the two for eleven fifty. You don't want to miss out on that. You got the original chicken sandwich, the Big King, the Big Fish, and the 10-piece chicken nuggets, all two for eleven fifty, and they come along with soft drinks and fries. All right, taking uh, you're joining me for the home court right now. I've got the Secretary General of the Bahamas Baseball Association, the BBA, Mr. Teddy Sweeting. We real name Theodore. We call him Teddy. He's joining us now, and we're talking all things baseball. Teddy, glad to have you here, man. It's been a minute, oh, but I'm awesome. glad you found me on the show, man. I'm happy to be here. All right, so we got we got lots to talk about, and, and and first and foremost, what we need to talk about obviously is baseball. Is uh, first and foremost the Andre Rogers National Baseball Championships going on this weekend, the 16th of June through the 19th, and you got all divisions covered. You got six and under. You got coach pitch. 10U, 12U, 14U, 16U, and 18U. And you got competing teams from all over. You got teams from Freedom Farm Baseball League, the Junior Baseball League in Nassau, Community Baseball League, the Grand Bahama Baseball League, the Abaco Youth Baseball League, the North Abaco Baseball League, the Ed on Brister Baseball League, and the Legacy Baseball League. So I know you must be excited in, in your capacity with the BBA to see this, you know, come into fruition and taking off and, you know, at a beautiful stadium as well. Well, you know, you know, Naughty, I think all sports is excited to get back going. You know, we have had a, had a two-year hiatus from the, with the COVID, and now we're back either on the courts or on the field. Now I start participating back in sports. So it's exciting now to bring the Andre Rogers National Baseball Championships back and in full fashion, ready to go. We're looking forward to all of it. On, on Thursday, we start out uh, on Thursday. The evening at 6 30 with our opening ceremonies and that will then be followed by i, I hear y'all got some show. some comedian dude hosting that that opening ceremony uh, for you i'll leave that till that is finished but yeah they better let you better announce that now our, our very own naughty will be our <laughs> mc for that evening <laughs> so it's gonna be pretty exciting well you listen know, listen all fun. your all your officials in your capacity that's my moment right there you know that's when i get my money's worth <laughs> I said, that certain umpires know that this for last year and this for this year, I got credit. I expect you to kick me up again, too. Remember I saying it now? 
<laughs> we really do that, Donnie. You've always been there to support sports and especially baseball. But like I tell the umpires, you know, I'll never curse you all. I'll curse you all with finger gestures because you all can't see, so you'll never know what I said. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, so we get started at 6.30 on Thursday. Uh, opening ceremonies, we have the Minister of Sports will be there. And then don't, a, don't, we have a, don't we have an eight and under game, too, to kick it off that night as well after the opening yeah, ceremonies? After the game, we, have, we, we kick it off. We, we have our opening game, which is an – you call it you, – most people know the coach pitch, but it's an 8 U game. Eight. Yeah, coach pitch, and that'll be a game against Freedom Farm and JBLN. Oh, that so should be all, nice. That should be a nice one. Rivals, and so it's going to be a very interesting night. After the game, then we'll have our fireworks to say, hey, it's baseball again. And so we look forward to that. Then we kick off again at 8 o'clock uh, Friday, hoping to have some good weather throughout the weekend. And, and we'll be prepared to do some exciting things as we bring baseball back uh, to the diamond. And I'm telling you, man, you got a lot of leagues and, and a lot of teams represent, man. And everybody knows, you know, the big guys, Freedom Farm and JBLN, all right? But I'm telling you now, keep an eye on that community baseball league team. That team that Mario Ford is coaching, keep an eye on that team. Keep an eye on that team. Also keep an eye yeah, on yeah, our, Mario, Mario has the community baseball uh, 12 U team. Yeah. And, 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 you know, Mario's been doing this for such a long time. And Mario got and a lot of friends. He, he knows how to teach the game to young kids. Oof. And, and they're always ready to go on that field. And he gets them fired up, and he, do, he does a good thing. So it's going to be exciting. The competition is always exciting. We, are, we, we, we always know the two, the two dominant um, organizations. You know, Freedom Farm is always very dominant in our nationals. And then, you know, JBL is always there, uh, giving up a good fight. Uh, hey, they show like, up. At least they're consistent. They show up. They always come to the Nationals feel like they can win all the divisions. So we'll see how it goes. And then, you know, I, you know, Freedom, I mean, uh, uh, Legacy of Baseball League, Grand Bahama Baseball League, both of them, I've, I've talked down there, and they said the pandemic had them in a low way, but they'll be ready for Nationals. They'll be ready to go. Yeah, everybody. Well, as we all know, we had, we had postponed the Nationals. It was supposed to be earlier in the month, uh, around the 2nd and the 3rd. But we... You know, NASA went through a pandemic, uh, what we got on upswing in cases, and so we just made a tough decision. Um, whether, the, whether it was the best one or not, you know, needs to be seen. But what happens with that is you, you also impact a lot of, of individuals who wanted to come in and already set their times during that period of time, as well as our scouts. So we're hoping now that we can try to see how best to, to work that all out. But I, I know for one thing, we can't be doing that too often. Um, in respect of trying to reschedule and postpone in the nationals because we have a, because baseball is now a a big sport here for the country from the standpoint well, of international, from international scouts and people coming in, coaches from uh, high schools and colleges wanting to come see our talent. But that was my first question, like separate and apart from the uh, Andre Rogers National Baseball Championship. Number one, one of a couple I got for you, Teddy. Number one, when can we see baseball introduced into the sports curriculums in, in junior school and then in, and into junior high and high school. I think that, that, that baseball should replace softball for young men on, on that level. And I think that'll help the existing leagues that are going on as well as uh, provide opportunities for these kids to hone in and get some quality looks at scholarships as well. Because it's great to make it to the pros, don't get me wrong, and those, those uh, entities that are putting young men into the pro system, a great job to you. But what about the other guys that might not be good enough to be, you know, considered in the pro territory, but they definitely could play at the collegiate level, at a high level, get a degree, and still have a look at the pros later on down. So my point is, when are we integrating it? Uh, very good question, Naughty. But what we're working on is a program to, to work along with government. What, what we really need is a lot more diamonds in the country. Uh, and that's one of the reasons we want to see once the stadium is finished and we get the adjacent fields to really look at how we can establish a proper high school baseball program that can that can be uh, can sustain and not just start it up and then stop. So it 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 it, it is on the drawing board. We're looking at it, and it has to be done. It's not something that you can sit around and wait for, because we need a lot of our talent is within the high school systems and and what we call in our inner city areas. That's where the talent is, and that's where we got to go and concentrate and bring back out. I know the minister has a program where he's going to give additional support to, 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 to sporting organizations 
who have a, uh, a certain effort of going back into the inner city and trying to get as much of the young people in, in, involved in sports and into the sport that you're actually establishing. All right, well, we, we'll keep an eye on that and, and we'll continue to agitate and try to, to do as much as we can to positively get that ball going in that direction because I think that's where we need to have it. And I think that'll, that'll bring I, a I, lot of guys back in to having that, 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 that school spirit and saying, you know what, maybe I don't want to get caught up in some of these negative activities going on. I got baseball to play. I got opportunity, you know? And then, then, then you, you bring basketball back to where it needs to be and out, out of a sport and disciplines and give them that option. Because at the end of the day... We're dealing with we're losing a whole generation of young men between 18 and 25, in, in my opinion, 18 to 30, in the in the gang culture, and sometimes even even earlier. You know what I mean? And if we could get them deterred away from that and into something else that's positive, I think that's half the battle right there. Well, we always say sports is the answer to our social problems. Man. We we the emphasis has to be on getting kids more and more in these uh, extracurricular activities, especially with sports. So you will not, not get an argument from me on that. Enough. All right. Second question I have, and this has been the hot commodity uh, and the hot topic question, and the hot button topic, whichever park I go to. Naughty, you got to talk about this on the show. All right. So let me put it to you like this. In talking with, with my fellow coaches from around the globe, like in, especially in America and Canada, but more importantly from Florida and Georgia and New Jersey. I have a lot of friends and, 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 and coaches that, that coach youth baseball. Okay, and do you know at some point it always comes up in the conversation? Well, Naughty, how, how many gangs did you guys play this year? And I shamefully got to say, well, between 18 and 24, and to which they laugh and say, 24 games is our preseason. We just finished an 84 game season, we just finished a 100 game season. Baseball is muscle memory and repetition. These kids need as many reps playing baseball as they can. Why is there such a disconnect? have an interleague play here in the Bahamas, in New Providence especially, especially between JBLN, Freedom Farm, and, and maybe even Adam Bristol's League and the Community Baseball League. Isn't that an ample opportunity to get more games in and give the kids more repetition, regardless of, of league affiliation? Because last time I checked, don't the National League and the American League have interleague series every year, and they don't like each other at all? So why can't we get to that point where we have interleague play? Boy, Nutty, <laughs> if I had a straightforward answer for you and that one, I, I would I'd really like to give it. Is it more but politics guess, and minutia of the politics and the layers of the no, politics? It's, 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 it's nothing to do with politics. It's more of whether the leagues want to move in that direction and 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 and, and, and play uh, in a league games against themselves. So we don't we don't right. dictate or have anything to do in respect of how the leagues play their seasons when it starts, when it ends. It's totally up to them. But w shouldn't we get to have it, maybe a governing body that, 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 that it is, you know, the umbrella for all these leagues so we can have, like, a uniform product? We are the... We, you do have an umbrella governing body. The problem is, is that... Uh, not a problem, but the thing is, is that the leagues govern themselves from the standpoint of, of, of the play because all of the leagues play diff under different international Ooh. organizations, ah, okay. like a Freedom Comic, Babe Ruth, um, JBL and his pony. Then when you go to Grand Baham, it's Little League. So all of them are affiliated with various private organizations in the States. And it's going to be very um, hard to um, get them uh, off of those private organizations in the States because they've had affiliation for years. Correct. And you're not going to get them off. And that's how they develop. That's how uh, the, the rules that they follow. And so it's it, it just a... Uh, they well, all adapt to come to the Nationals and play under the rules that we have set, why don't and that's the, the only time. Why don't the BBA offer, like, a, a league the same time and, and the guys could play, like, intramurally there, too? And now you got, like, three options, and you could get maybe 60 games out of the deal. And, you, and, you, you see and what I question about? Well. <laughs> that's being reviewed, and we're looking at that as well. <laughs> no, no, you're not pushing. You know, you and I speak a lot about those type of things, but that is an option that we're looking at. You know, um, we're also trying to put together our own development league here in the country. We're working right now with Major League Baseball. So that's going to be something we release well, between I'm, now, end of year, first of next year. I'm glad you're being proactive with that because, as you know, Major League Baseball has, has, has claimed and has, has deemed and, and, and targeted and crowned the Bahamas right up there with Aruba as, like, the next Dominican Republic. Like, they're, they're saying Dominican Republic, they, they had a good run, but... Those waters are fished out. We got a lot of talent coming from the Bahamas and from Aruba. So I I'm glad to know that we're trying to get 
those develop you have the talent as you can see it, it, most definitely they call it they used to call us little curacao but i think we from from a population standpoint and the amount of young men we have in the minor league system and then the major leagues we have two um one in and out and so we're surpassing curacao right now from that standpoint looking very very good um i'll also like to say i want the bahamas to get ready the stadium is going to be completed over the next 2 to 3 months so we're already set the opening on a big time in december where everybody will have an opportunity to see all of our minor leaguers they're going to be playing in what we call the cbc the caribbean baseball championships where we the winner of that tournament will be able to be qualified to go to the cac games this is the first time in our history that the Bahamas will host a qualifier for the CAC game. So we're moving in the right direction, Nadi. And I want all the Bahamas to realize a lot of them have not seen these minor leaguers play, but it'll be a great opportunity. They're looking forward to it. So it will be a very exciting time in December. All right. That's awesome. And our minor leaguers are doing so well, too. That's a whole other show we got to so bring good. you on and have a conversation with. Yeah, let's... yeah. I'll come back for I, just wanna, I had to throw that out there, Nadi. I know. Let's go to the phone lines real quick, though. We got a caller coming in right now, so let, let's get the call. Talking Edge, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? Nadi. Hey, how are you? It's Coach Simmons. Hey, Simmons. What's going on, man? I'm listening to Terry. <clears throat> Simmons, on I'm a separate note, I really need about, to talk to you. And, 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 all, your, all your point. One second, Simmons. Okay. I need to talk to you. You need to make sure I link me after the show. In fact... Get your number to my producer, please. I got to talk to you. Or is it in one of them coaches' groups? No problem. I got to talk to you, man. I got to run something by you. Real talk. No problem. All right? The, the mountain is coming to my heart. Come to the mountain on this one. But now, <laughs> back to your point about, uh, about baseball and the repetition in the games and the, and the interleague play that you were talking about. Well, not only that, I was out to air on Bristol Field on Saturday morning. We, we had a man's practice out there. And I was out there with uh, Mike Butler. And I looked at it. And it was something I said to Greg years ago. Is when I first got the Freedom Farm back in '91. I said, "Look at these guys in the I'm in the inner city, so to speak. I'm in the inner areas. How do they get to a Freedom Farm or to a JBLN? And there's so much talent right within those areas." And I said, "I see what Teddy is saying, but you also have a challenge of logistics. Now these guys with no trans, how are they going to get up there to play against a?" a a Mario Ford at Wolf Road or a Freedom Bomb or a JBLN. That would be an ideal. Back in our time growing up, we had we had four Charlotte Raiders playing us playing against other teams from, from other areas, but everybody had a central point. Or they would go to sports center to play. Okay? Or we would go down to on the play. So now, look at it, we have grown, but then the question is, have we also done a, a service now, in I finding where the real talent is? I can be honest with you, two points you made that, 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 that I like. First and foremost, in 2022, going to 2023, if these kids playing, they will find a ride some way, some shape, or form. It amazes me. Yeah. And then you got good coaches like yourself, like myself, who, no shame in our game. We drop everybody on before, make sure they get yeah, home safe exactly. if needs be. Yeah. So I don't really look at, tra- at competition and transportation as an issue. I feel if the, if the leagues had coordinated it and they do have interleague play, it will be well attended, it will be well supported. Now, as far as the, the other point that you made, you were saying about uh, the interleague play. Yeah. And the parks. And the parks. One of the things that I looked at with Greg, I say, we have that nice park in Golden Gate. Uh, uh, um, the, um, uh, the Golden Gate Straight Park, a, a nice park. Right. Now, as we know, under the last administration, we actually did a walk with, with Desmond Bannister and say, hey, look, this year could be turned into a field. Imagine this baseball here in the community in the evening. Well, well I've long been well, a, like, a, a, a proponent for boys and girls clubs in each constituency where you have retired teachers <laughs> who get a stipend for helping them with their school work after school, and then they go right. into whatever discipline, and you play the various boys and girls club for your national championships and inter-island championships, but it develops. And yes, I think that we need to look at some of the inner city fields, and I, I don't know how Teddy feels about this, but but if, if but government is going to be... Said in the conversation, when I called in two weeks ago, uh, Naughty, if you remember, you said, hey, there was a guy named Alex Rodriguez, boys and girls come. Yeah, and exactly. Story, exactly. Right? But you, those stories have to be told and written by Bahamians to come up. We got, listen, Jazz is doing big things right now, but I'll be honest with you. Jazz is, 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 is the trailblazer right now. There are many more behind him that have potential to make it as well. 
And he says that, you know, in our last conversation, this is because a, some of these, and, and he wrote in an article. Just they a great segue. More, you know, they develop more guys like me because in the my, pipeline, but hey, we got to go and find them. Speaking of jazz, this is a great segue because now I'm going to segue into Teddy's second portion for being here, <laughs> the big night for jazz and the homecoming night for jazz in the mornings, but I'm going to let you all know now. Both of y'all got to, I'm going to be there, but Simmons, I need you to look out for me, and Teddy, I need you to look out for me because you know they had a certain players-only meeting, and they tried to rough our boy jazz up. And I have, I have the hashtag see why you know what contingent ready to unleash the wrath of every bit of Bahamian wrath on them. <laughs> and you know me, I will, I will go and ask the question. Don't give me a press pass because I get up in the locker room and ask them why you're hating on Jazz. Yeah. <laughs> what happened, Jazz Thief, one of your girlfriends? Hey, what's going on? So l- let me know. But, I mean, but, 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 let the Bahamian people know. That all you're doing is like taking gas and putting it on a fire. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Gas on fire right now. Telling, you talking about gas like that. See what he did after the game. Um, hey. the manager said he didn't know how his team was gonna come out and play after that that meeting, that ninety minute meeting. Guess what Jazz comes out and do? Grand slam and a two run shot. Grand slam. You know my 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 Yankee heart is, is jinxing as much as I can. I on Twitter, I on Facebook, and I jinx in the Marlins to trade Jazz. Get rid of him. Right. Send him to the Yankees. He'd look better in pinstripes oh, anyway. Right. Not since oh, Willie oh, Randolph, and we had a second got, baseman, not good. Yankee, you got another Yankee on the next line. Oh, God. The, the, be rooting hard. Be rooting hard, Teddy. Be rooting hard. Forget Cano. Forget Robinson we Cano. We be going back. The holes so we can see the but let's be right. Frankie can't go to New York every time he will go see. Game? But I could go when Frankie can go and Frankie could go when I can go. And we got family and friends there. And then you could yep. go when we can go, Teddy. It's not like you wouldn't make the trip. But my point is this. Of course I would. The, the Bahamas has to rock the vote right now and vote Jazz in as the starter for the All-Star game. And yep. Very much so. And stop. Around, and you have to make sure that every day you remind them they have to vote. And then they need to stop skinning up and playing cute and accepting the fact that Anderson is the best second baseman in baseball because he's not. Jazz is. Period. Jazz leads leads in second baseman in the major categories. But Bahamas have to understand the the all-star starters is not by the best on the field. It is popularity. It's voted by the fans. So you can get somebody who is undeserving to start over Jazz because their fans took the time to vote. Vote. That, and I feel Jazz true. should be getting at least 300,000 votes a day from the Bahamas. 300,000 a day. That's right, because you could vote every day. Five every day, as soon as the clock rolls over, yeah. Every time the clock rolls That's over, right. you could vote, yeah. Now, like- big night over there, Teddy. And I see I got one more caller coming in, so let me take the call, and then we can get yeah. to the rap, because time is flying on this one today. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, 96.9. Rory, you want me to leave this uh, a number, right? Yeah, Simmons, I, I, hold on for the, for, the, for, the, for the producer. He'll get your number, and I'll call you tonight, all right? I got a couple of things I really need to talk to you about. Second of all, let's go to the phone lines. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Who's this? Well, there you go. Anyway, well, guess what, Teddy? We, we could get the rap in now. Let everybody know that big homecoming night over there in Florida we're going to invade Marlins Park. We're taking the goatskin drums. We're taking the conch fritters. We're taking the peas and rice to tailgate in the party in, in the parking lot. And then we're getting out there and we're going to support Jazz. And we're going to support everything, baby. And that's June 25th, correct? It, it, June 25th, Bahamian, Marlins Bahamian Heritage Night. It's all set. For all the Bahamian fans who want to participate, please go on Marlins. Come forward slash Bahamian. That's the only way you're going to get the jersey. And I, I have a lot of people calling me, oh, Teddy, you want to, I can't get you the jersey unless you come to the ball. Hey, that's other people, but you're making sure my jersey's straight, right? <laughs> and, and the other one is the bubble hair. I Josh just, Josh just approved the bubble hair the other day. Everybody who goes to the ballpark. Get a bobblehead collection. Oh, because I got a bobblehead collection, so I need to add Jazz to my bobblehead. I can put him right between A Rod and Jeter. Between A Rod and Jeter, that's why I'm putting him. Yeah, he has the Bahamian, the Bahamian flag as his headband, and it's an awesome bobblehead. And see, so please, I can't put him. I, enjoy. I can't put him in the case with, with, with the Barry Bonds bobblehead because his, his head is eight times bigger than any average bobblehead out there. But Barry Bonds in the case all by himself with his satellite head. <laughs> but you, let's I be real. You. Listen to me. 
never know. Listen to me. Let me tell you a funny story. I had Barry Bonds front row joke as well. Front row joke as well. And I had him all to myself for 20 minutes. Oh, boy. Boy, you know I had some fun with that, though. <laughs> boy, I had some fun with that. Did you have security? No, man. He, guess what? He, he got a great sense of humor, bro. Great okay, sense of humor. I was 10 impressed by Barry Bonds. He took the jokes. He threw some out so we could crack jokes more on him. Then he oh, was good. very good after the show, did autographs, did pictures, did everything, man. He was a great, great guy. For all that I've heard from the locker room, and you know how reporters go, you know, a, a play keeps it real with you. You rub them the wrong way. And I'm thinking maybe Jazz kept it real with some reporters and rubbed them the wrong way. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> that's a good old Bahamian. Since when these ice boxes, you know, as, as a people, we can let you know. You know, you got a level of jealousy right now. You have a young kid just coming out. He's from a he's from a country who they don't realize to play the game of baseball. He's excelling. He's exciting. Hey, and he's can, bringing all kind of magic. Can I tell you to, something? To, 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 can I tell you something? Florida. So you know, you know who he reminds me of, and and it was a different sport, but 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 the young man at the same age. Had Miami locked when he left the University of Miami Hurricanes and then went on to play for the Dallas Cowboys. He reminds me a lot of Michael Irvin. Like, I'm going to show Michael up flamboyant. Irvin. I'm going to tell you I'm good. I'm going to tell you I'm going to beat yep. you. And while I'm beating you, I can remind you that I'm beating you when I told you. And after the game, I get again that I just beat you. And I look good in the process with green hair and purple socks and purple batting gloves. And I'm making the colors rock and look good. Hey, man, listen. Awesome. I, I support Jazz 150%, and if I got to throw in Kong Shell on the field, I will. <laughs> oh, and everybody, uh, we have it all set up. Our prime minister was supposed to be thrown on the first pitch, but we all, we found out that he has, a, 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 I think, a heads of government meeting during that time. So what he should have done, what he should have done was got his son <laughs> Phil to throw out the first pitch. Phil, could, Phil could pitch. Side the minister... So now you got Mario oh, Boleg Mario out there. Pitch and he'll be doing that. Listen, yeah. hold on, hold on, Teddy. I saw Mario, I saw Minister Boleg in the Don't Blink Celebrity Softball Tournament. Okay? <laughs> Craig, Craig Burroughs, second pitch, parked it in the ocean. <laughs> Minister Boleg, not so much. But I would, I would take him over anybody on the basketball court any day of the week. I'm just praying that when Bole go out there, he don't shoot no jump shot from the pitching mound. He actually make a throw. But I told him to start doing some practices. Start doing some warm-up tosses, you know, for the next two to three weeks before we head on over. So There you go. I'm hoping he's doing that. Well, listen, we'll talk again. We'll talk again next week before, just to remind everybody, because it's been yes. a great conversation. I always like chopping it up with you, Teddy, and... When you, when you bring it to the, to the show like this, is always good, man. Always good stuff. Appreciate you, Nadi. All right. Let's go to celebrate, man. Make sure I just have my Marlins jersey tucked away on the side, okay? Got some, bro. And I put, in, I put in 71 on the back, you know what I mean? Or 73 on the back to celebrate independence, you know what I mean? One time. Thank you, bro. All right? Thank you, Nadi. But take right, care, buddy. man, and you know whatever the BBA needs, I got you, man. All right? You have a platform here, so don't be a stranger. Thanks, bro. All right? Thanks, man. Great stuff today. And, and as we wrap it up, uh, Mr. Producer, I, I want to thank uh, Teddy Sweeten for chiming in, Coach Simmons for chiming in, everybody on the text lines. Great conversation with Roscoe in the first hour and everybody who texted in there. Good stuff on a Monday, man. We're going to go to the commercial break, then we'll get to the news. From a super producer, Kermit, this your boy Naughty. We will see you tomorrow right here on Talking Ads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Don't touch it. Have a great Monday, y'all. Naughty Johnny's Restaurant can only be described as the experience you want to recreate again and again and again. Their motto is simple food done well. You're welcome into their home at Naughty Johnny's where you can dine on crack conch, conch fritters, and other Bahamian favorites. There's also an international flair that's guaranteed to offer something for everyone. Enjoy a good meal and listen to live band on their patio Friday and Saturday nights or brunch on Saturday and Sunday only at Naughty Johnny's Restaurant in the Old Town Plaza, Old Fort. They're open 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Friday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. on Saturday, and 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Sunday. Naughty Johnny's. Well, what the...
That's right, boys and girls. Get ready to play basketball at the 34th annual Jeff Rogers Basketball Camp, July 4th through July 29th at the Kendall G. L. Isaacs Gym, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. daily. So, parents, get your boys and girls through 18 registered now. Applications available at the South Bahamas Conference of Seventh Day Adventists, Tonic Williams Darling Highway, and at the registration desk at Campsite Kendall G. L. Isaacs Gym. Special appearances by NBA players, legends, and coaches. So, get your boys and girls registered now, ages 5 through 18, for the 34th annual Jeff Rogers Basketball Camp, July 4th through July 29th. The King wants you to take a walk on the tangy side with the all-new Zesty Whopper collection at Burger King Nassau. Enjoy the classic Zesty Whopper with two types of cheese, zesty sauce, and crispy onions stacked on 100% flame-grilled beef. Or go zesty on our plant-based Whopper and crispy chicken. All three are saucy, crunchy, and full of flavor, and only available at Burger King Nassau. Visit any of our seven locations and enjoy a Zesty Whopper as a combo or as part of the King's Feast at Burger King Nassau, where taste is king. The most important thing in life is family. And whenever you need reliable advice, you look to the people you know you can trust. At J.S. Johnson Insurance Agents and Brokers, we earn our clients' trust every day. Whether it's home, motor, travel, or commercial insurance, we've got you covered. Call 397-2100 or visit jsjohnson.com. J.S.J., 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 Need to satisfy your late night munchies? KFC drive throughs are open and frying until midnight every night of the week. Whether you're craving juicy fries and biscuit or one of our signature KFC sandwiches, we've got you covered with 100% KFC flavor. Catch some late night vibes and take a ride to your neighborhood KFC for after dark satisfaction. Last call to get fueled by KFC fried chicken is midnight. Late night cravings at KFC Nassau. It's finger licking good. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. 